Shalom, shalom. This is Rabbi Moshe Otero with the Ways of Israel. We're continuing our study of the Letters for the Ages by the Ramban and Nachmanides. And we're looking at, in this chapter 16, the most coveted of all delights, attributing honor to its source, and the importance to be humble before your God. Chapter 16, Nachmanides begins, if it if it is honored, does not honor belong to God? As it is written, wealth and honor comes from you, First Chronicles 29, verse 12. How can one glorify himself with honor of his maker? In Mesilas Yesharim, chapter 11, it posits the, the pursuit of glory, which is the man's essential drive. More than money, more than power, or physical pleasure, man yearns for honor. The Ramban and Nachmanides here hints at how we may understand this, that God has bestowed upon mankind every resource for attaining pleasure on earth. Honor, however, he has left as lone exception. People can purchase external and sincere honor, but true honor, the most coveted of delights, remains in the possession of God himself. Alas, it is human nature to yearn for the inaccessible. Thus, the ultimate honor is all the more sought after by mortals, attributing honor to its source. Talmud in Hulin 89a records that an outstanding inequality of the Jew is that when he is commended, he reacts with humility, attributing glory to God. The Holy One, blessed be he, said to Israel, my sons, I yearn for you because even when I shower glory upon you, you make little of yourselves indifference to me. I have great glory to Abraham. And he said, I am not but dust and ashes. Genesis chapter 18, verse 27. I bestowed greatness upon Moses and Aaron. And they said, what are we? Exodus 16, verse 7, I elevated David to lofty heights, and he says, I am a worm and not a man, Psalms 22, verse 7. But when I lifted a Gentile ruler to glory, Nimrod, Pharaoh, Sennacherib, and Nebuchadnezzar, they waxed proud and reacted with blasphemous arrogance. Arrogance, my friend, is the eclipse of heavenly glory. Messiah Sharim writes, that an honest man realizes that his accomplishments are a bar barometer of his obligations. Rabbi Israel Salanter used to say, I know that in many ways I have the capacity of 1,000 men, but because of this, my obligation to serve Hashem is also that of 1,000 men. One who attributes undue honor to himself not only engages in an act of distasteful vanity, the Rambam writes, and he literally distracts from the honor due to God himself. As King Solomon said, To avot Hashem kol gava lev yad. All the proud hearts are abomination of Hashem, of the Lord, hand to hand. He shall not go unpunished. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 5. Malbim explains that although God is patient, with transgressors, he punishes the arrogant immediately and directly hand to hand. Indeed, it is man's arrogance and vaingloriously eclipsed the splendor of his creator. Let me add that there is no greater arrogance than one that usurped the position of God, saying that he will eliminate God's children. The idol of one's own likeness. God created the world so that he is recognized by mankind, and mankind so that they recognize the creator. To the extent that man magnifies himself, he thus distracts from his purpose of existence. Hence God declares, He, the arrogant man, and I cannot exist in the same world. Sota chapter 5, verse uh, 5a. In venerating himself, the arrogant man worships the idol of his own likeness. The responsibility of authority. Chofetz Chaim writes that the power buries those who improperly wield it. 
Although a father deserves the son's recognition, he ought not place too heavy of a burden on his son not to, to treat him callously. If one is elevated to a position of authority, he must take care to treat those beneath him with consideration. Our sages taught that Joseph, who was next to the youngest, bro- youngest of his brothers, died before all of them because he lorded over them. He asked the leader to remain aware of the power to bury those who improperly willed it. Mechane Israel chapter 2, verse 3. In our next video, we will be taking a look at how this can go to affect even wisdom. And we'll take a look at the words of Job, chapter 12, verse 20. So we learn in this chapter the importance that to give proper glory and honor, not to oneself, but to God always. God and to God is all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. And whoever tries to take it, takes an eclipse from God's rightful part, which is honor and glory. Shalom, shalom, and may God bless you this week and protect all Kaladi Israel. Shalom.